And Neil, of course, you were there when Uber was expanding into China and you are an Uber shareholder. By default, you're a DD shareholder. What do you make of the lackluster reception by investors today? You know, uh, I don't know if it was lackluster. They raised more than they planned to, right? They ex exercised the green shoe. It closed above trading price. So, you know, if it closed at 16, people would be saying they left money off the table. If it closed at 12, they'd say, you know, they failed. So I think it was a fine, a fine showing. So uh, let's talk about what happened with Uber in China. Uber tried to compete against DD in China, ultimately sold its China business to DD, took a stake in the company. This has largely, in the annals of Silicon Valley history, been seen as a loss. You think it was a win for Uber. Why? I mean, it's, it's sort of simple math. We invested $2 billion in Uber uh, China, and we got out today, if you do the math, Uber owns 12% of DD, uh, about $8.4 billion. So that's $6.4 billion of profit. Um, usually, most businesses would say, that's pretty great. That's a win. Um, I think uh, people just, you know, at the time wanted to, to, to show that, well, we didn't become the dominant player in China, which is true. But we decided at the time that the economics were right to do a trade where we got 20% of the company at the time in exchange for retreating from the market. And that was the best economic decision for shareholders and employees. How would you compare Uber's, as you see it, uh, success or track record in China to other U.S. tech companies like you know, Facebook, which is still blocked in China, Google, uh, which had to leave the country, uh, Airbnb, which is still fighting. Yeah. I mean, there was, if you touch social networking or sensitive areas like Google Maps or, or Facebook, um, the Chinese government's going to be very sensitive about letting you on the app stores, which is why they're not in there. Uber, at the, you know, because we're more focused on transportation, which is a less sensitive area from a government standpoint, we were allowed to exist. In fact, many of the mayors in China that I met were excited to have us there because we would compete against Didi, which meant lower prices for consumers and better better wages for drivers. But today, I think there's been a, a bit of a cold war between the countries. Like back in 2016, it was a much more optimistic time in US-China relations. Um, they were gonna pass a bill to allow investment banks in there. Um, but but today, it's much more difficult for any company like, even like Uber, but forget Facebook, to, to be able to launch in China. Uh, you had an interesting tweet storm about all of this. Uh, one of my, um, uh, one that stood out to me, you said, while it's not fashionable for Uber 2.0 management to praise the achievements of the 1.0 team, shareholders will likely have well over $10 billion in value to attribute to the Uber China and Uber Russia teams. Um, you know, what do you make of the fact that, uh, you know, Uber 2.0, Dara Khosrowshahi's Uber, has pulled back from a lot of the, uh, the, the work that you started, um, and possibly for good reasons, uh, sold off self-driving cars and flying taxis and, you know, moonshot initiatives that were going to take a lot of work if they ever were going to work. Yeah, I think some of those moves were fine, like the self-driving car and definitely the flying taxi one. But I think if you're going to be a tech company and try to be a FANG level tech company, you've got to have innovation that drives new products. And if you take the acquisitions that Uber's done uh, over the last four years out of it, there hasn't been as much innovation as there needs to be to be a generational company. And that's, that is my criticism of, of how to think about really uh, the difference between 1.0 and 2.0 from, a, from a, uh, a technology standpoint. Now, there are some people who would say Uber's never going to be the next Google. Uh, you know, Google isn't necessarily the right comparison, but Google isn't, uh, Uber's never going to be a Google-sized company. Others would say Uber was never going to be a Google-sized company. How would you respond to that? Yeah, I would say it would have been if, if Travis and I were still there, that's for sure, because we would have, um, you know, how, I think we would have seen the grocery delivery uh, opportunity that Instacart has is, is dominated much earlier. I think we would have actually won against DoorDash uh, in the U.S. for food delivery. And they're a $60 billion company. Now that market cap would have accrued to Uber. Um, and I just think from an innovation standpoint, we would have had a much longer roadmap. And transportation is huge. The amount of money spent on transportation, trucking, passenger delivery is bigger than the amount of money spent on search advertising. So I think, I think there was a possibility there. Well, it's impossible to prove a hypothetical, but we'll never know, though. I hear your point. At this stage in 
Uber's life cycle, what would you like to see? I mean, Uber is in a way kind of a holding company for a lot of these other bets, uh, though they weren't necessarily, they haven't necessarily evolved the way you would have uh, liked to see them evolve. But DD, for example, is one of many bets um, like self-driving cars in a broader portfolio. It's almost yeah. more like a VC. It, it, it's a little bit like IAC, right? The holding company where, where Dari came from. So it has a flavor of that holding company uh, strategy to it. I would like to see more innovation. They need a head of product management. I think Dara's still the head of product management. They need to sort of get the innovation um, uh, people in the game and give them license to do some things um, that are not sort of just shareholdings in other companies. I mean, the stock performance is the biggest, uh, you know, measure here. IPO in May of 19 at $45, say it's 50, 10% increase, and the NASDAQ's been up 120%. So I do think, you know, to really get back to uh, where these other tech companies have grown, they've got to do some innovation in-house, not via acquisition alone.